Well, I have to say, I really like that title, so I'll keep it. And uh, Dr. Rose, that was a fine introduction. You know I love you. And you got everything right, but I was the best college debater, not one of them. <laughs> so, and I appreciate it, uh, Repentra, very much. Uh, when I was asked to speak today uh, by John, I, you know, I was part of the debate society here, and we never prepared for speeches at all. We would just speak off the cuff. You remember that. And so this is the first speech I've prepared for in 35 years, although I talk a lot. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get it right. But a couple of things uh, did occur to me. First of all, speeches are best when they are short. So it's going to be very short. I remember being you, okay? <laughs> yeah. Five, six minutes, okay? Yes. Right. Um, but on a serious note, I, I will say this, um, having been in the audience, I, and really, I, I really mean this, I, and I don't want to disparage anyone. Uh, uh, as I recall, I graduated from uh, Duke. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur in residence, or I was at Dartmouth. I, I don't know what that really is, <laughs> but it's something nice, I guess. But being here is absolutely the best. There's no question about it. My heart lies here. So I did put time into what I want to say to you, because it's important to me, and I think, I think you might get something out of it. Um, but what I want to avoid are bumper st sticker type things, you know, little uh, phrases or whatever. Um, and I'm going to speak to you sort of from my experience, and maybe out of all this, you'll take a couple of things, maybe one thing. I really want that for you. Uh, number one, find something that you love to do. That's a big deal. That sounds like a bumper sticker. It kind of is, but find something you really love to do. Your work is not your whole life. Absolutely. Your work is not your whole life, but it is material to a good life. So find something that you want to do. Now, your parents are going to chafe a little bit at this, okay? <laughs> They're going to say, I know that, but what does that really mean? How do we manifest that? Uh, when I graduated from college in the 1880s, it feels like, it was the 1980s, um, all, of, all the guys I graduated with, you know, you go for a job, maybe you go to uh, work in one company three, four years, and you go to grad school, or you stay with a company. You're part of a generation and I like this, this is one thing millennials never used in, in a real good way. <laughs> but one thing I like about your generation is there's a lot more experimentation about things. Try different jobs in your 20s, try things, don't get stuck. You might be a finance major, uh, you could be political science. You have an idea of what you wanna be, but use your 20s and even early 30s to experiment and try different things, don't get locked in. That's a big deal. Um, one of the things that makes me sad when I think about it, I've employed hundreds, maybe thousands of young people, and it saddens me to think that there's some of us, you know, all of us, who have jobs that we don't love. And I, I hope that does not happen to you. Don't, don't settle for that. Life is more than that. So try to find something that you like to do, and if you have to experiment, do it. Uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting being up here, I've realized that commencement addresses have turned into short Super Bowl ads, you know what I mean? You have to have some incredible thing to say. I don't have anything incredible to say. I'm really saying what I hope you can take away and what is real for you. So the second one kind of falls into that category. My father, um, my father actually was born like a, about a mile from here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, he never graduated from college. In fact, he did not graduate from high school. Uh, he was in the Marine Corps, and then he got a GED. Uh, but my father, even though he was not educated, was wise. Big difference between being educated and being wise and having wisdom. It's really true. It's really true. So that's what we have to seek. But he used to say, be around people that you want to be like. That is absolutely true. This university, which is awesome, right? No question about it. This university... I know that's hokey, but I'm going to say it. And it's incredible what Dr. Milady, what uh, Dr. Patillo have done over the last 30 years. Look at how have we've grown and what we've done. But anyway, my father used to say, be around people who you want to be like, employers, family, friends, because you will take on their characteristics. So be careful about that. That's really true. Now, the second two points, and I'm going to keep it short, I promised you, right, are a little bit vague, and I'm going, to, I'm going to do the best I can. What's the third thing that I've learned in the last 34 years? And I can't believe it's been 34 years, but it has been. What's the third thing that I've learned? Happiness is a bank shot. You don't get happy directly. 
you get happy by giving to other people. I think that's the way we're constructed, really. That's the way we are, that's, this is what I believe. It's my stage for a little while, right? This is my belief, I don't know if I'm right. But happiness is a bank shot, it's how you serve other people. Your philosophy, your religion, these thoughts that you have, political views. How do you treat your kids? How do you treat your spouse? How do you treat your mother and father? That's what makes you real. When I look back at my life, and I do, I think about the small, petty, not cruelties, but thoughtless things I've done in my close group. Look at that type of stuff. That's what's going to define your success. How do you treat people around you? But really, happiness is a bank shot. Now, I get a, I want to say this, I get a lot of accolades that I don't deserve. And it's absolutely true. That's not false modesty. It's for real. Um, it really is. I started an organization, Inmates to Entrepreneurs, and we help people who have been incarcerated to start their own businesses. And I started that with Reverend Robert Harris back in 1992. Now, why do I do that? Well, uh, you know, you get these uh, people ascribe things, oh, you're a good guy, you're doing good stuff. Why do I do that? It makes me feel good. So that is a paradox, right? That's a paradox. Those are things that you hold. Those are constructs you hold at the same time. If I'm doing stuff for other people, I feel good. So in some ways, service is almost a self-oriented thing. It's sort of the way that we're engineered. Now, again, that is, a, is an obvious thing, but here's what I would ask you to do. And, you know, just think about it at least. And mostly for the young people, although this is good for us old folks too, right? When something happens, you get a relationship that breaks, do you look in the mirror at yourself first or them? And how often do you do that? You're a husband, you're a wife, you're a daughter, you're a son, right? Think about these key relationships. Are you looking in the mirror, how can I get better, right? Or are you sort of like, oh, it's that person's fault? Now, I've worked with a lot of people. I've been an employer to a lot of people. And I always want to know, is that person going to grow? Are they going to gain knowledge? Are they going to look inside of themselves? Or are they just going to sort of not blame the world, but just sort of think, oh, something happened to me? So the third one is, is really super important. But before I came up here, again, this, you know, I want to make sure I get this right for you, at least give you some information. I started looking on the internet about other commencement addresses, and one guy made a bed and talked about how making a bed perfectly is something he did every day, and that was a big YouTube thing, you know, I guess. Uh, and then, um, and I just, I, I watched a lot of stuff, but I really wanted to, you know, what can I really give to you? But here's what I did not want to do. Um, I remember watching one about, I think a senator from Michigan, Maine, or something like that, talking about the future of democracy. I mean, really, you know, is this, this is important to us, obviously, but is that really going to resonate with you and change your life? I would say no. So most people like me, we get up, we're talking, we're kind of talking to ourselves. And I really want to make sure that I'm not doing that, that I'm trying to help you. But I will take a little bit of a sort of a global look here. Adam Smith wrote a book called Wealth of Nations. And in that, really, he is sort of the god of the free market system, right? That's what he espouses. But what many people forget is that years before, he wrote a book called The Theory of Moral Sentiments. And what did he say in that? He said, sure, it's great that we have a free enterprise system. Uh, we want the market to be the arbiter of how we change. I stand before you as an unreformed capitalist, right? But what is that based on? It's based on ethics, a moral compass by citizens, by doing the right things, by giving back. What about the poor folks of this country? There's a lot of them. There's some here, but there's a lot outside of this state. Think about where we are right now, right? Really, like outside this state, and there's a lot of poor folks. So we can only have a capitalist system if we as citizens do the right thing and give back to people. So I would leave that with you as well. All right, I'm going to tell a, a Sacred Heart story, and then I'm going to tell you to have fun, because that's what today's about, too, and celebration. When I went to Sacred Heart, it was, uh, it was an amazing experience. I'm the first person in my family to go to college, uh, for my sisters just by a couple of years, by the way. <laughs> Sorry about that. But um, 
It was amazing to me. I go to political science classes and they'd be talking about the left and right and I, and I was like, left of the room, right of the room? I, was like, I didn't even know what they were talking about, right? It was totally new to me. But here's, John, here's what Sacred Heart has really meant to me as I think about what I've carried through my life. The spiritual journey. I was president of student government and a fellow named Cardinal O'Connor came to speak at our college. I want to say, at the, I don't know what I was at that time. I wasn't uh, an atheist. Uh, I wasn't agnostic. I was sort of an I don't careist. You know what I mean? I, I sort of didn't think about it a lot. My father always made me go to mass. But at that time, about 21, 22 years old, I had checked out of the religion hotel. I was just sort of like, forget it. Well, Codner, Cardinal O'Connor, I don't know if you remember this, Dr. Rose, but he spoke for 45 minutes with no notes. It was amazing. I was there as the ceremonial leader, you know, the, the president, student government, all this good stuff. And I was sort of doing what I used to do in mass, which is, you know, kind of listening, but not really, you know, what do I have to do for schoolwork tonight, that type of thing. And, uh, but he spoke incredibly, no notes. And he spoke about the sanctity of life. But it was amazing, actually. And even now, I, I kind of, I know it's hokey. I know you guys are young. I understand that. But even now I get uh, goosebumps, I think about that. I, I think it's probably the Holy Spirit, actually. But he said something fascinating. He said, the problem with the Catholic religion is that we don't lean on the New Testament enough. And I think it's true even today. So this is, what, and, and actually at that point, because I, was, I thought I knew everything, I really did, I was sort of, um, at that time in my life I was, uh, well, I don't know, I know it all, I guess is the best way to say it. <laughs> but um, I went and I researched the origin of the universe according to the scientists. I said, hey, this guy, Cardinal O'Connor, really smart guy, but the scientists have some better explanation, right? That was sort of the generation I was raised in. And then I looked at it and I said, is this all you got? But what really hit me is I started to read slowly my journey has been a zigzag, by the way, not a perfect one, and yours might not be a perfect one. But I started to read the New Testament about this guy called Jesus Christ. And it amazed me, because we're the Christians, some of them, and I know we have different faiths here, by the way, I'm gonna kind of end on a different note. Christians, I, I, can, I like him, I'll take him or leave him, but this guy, Christ, I like this guy. I really like him. So this is what I would say to you. This sounds a little preachy. I apologize. But there's a reason. Try to find a spiritual path because things are going to happen in your life. I mean, you talked about the person, uh, brain surgery. We, we lost a student. I mean, these are, can you imagine losing a child? Oh, my goodness. So try to find something that is a rock that lasts forever. Family, excellent, very important. Wives, husbands, children, no question about it. But what lasts forever, no matter what happens to you? So even if your faith is not that of a Christian, try to find something that lasts forever. Really a big deal. And at Sacred Heart, that's kind of where I am. That's where my journey started. Because as I said to you, you come up here, you talk, you're going to have a good life. You're going to have fun. You're going to have all these things. But sometimes things will happen. So what I want for you is something that will last forever that really is a bedrock, whatever your faith is, okay? All right. Wrap up here. One last thing. Life should be fun. It's just like anything else. When I was in school here, I was incredibly driven. I mean, some people would say, my kids would say, I'm still incredibly driven. I'm always on to the next thing. But... Plan fun, absolutely plan fun because, uh, you know, it's a journey. And I was talking to the guys, I remember being you when, you when I was young, people would say, boy, time goes by quickly. But I remember thinking, well, that, you're just saying that because you're old, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, but it's really true, time does go by quickly. So try to build in fun um, because, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a short journey. Has Sacred Heart done an amazing job or what? Come on. Come on, come on. These guys up here have done an amazing job. It's true, it's true. When I came here, this was a commuting college. 
I, I don't know how many people we had then, maybe, maybe 500, I, can't, I don't even remember. It was an easier election to win because of that. <laughs> but Sacred Heart has done a great job. Um, William and Nolan, I love you guys, don't forget that. God bless you and best wishes to you.